Alright, so I'm here now to do a new collection tour. It's been a few years since I did one of these and I thought, you know what, let's just get one of these filmed. And as you can notice, I have indeed moved room since I shot the last video. And if any of you were subscribed to my channel before 2015, you will know that this actually was my room beforehand. Uh, this was before I went off to university, however, I ended up being back here for the time being. And then my brother, which had who had this room for a little while, for a few years, but then he went off to uni in London, so... I took the room, so I thought since I've re-put the collection back in here, I'd do a bit of a tour. There's a lot to go through. It's been updated, and then it, of course it d it just doesn't look anything like it did back in 2015. I think the only piece really in my collection, or, or just in the room in general, that is where it was originally, is a guitar. There, <laughs> that's literally the only part I thing I can remember being exactly where it was from when I had the room previously. But there is a there's a lot there's a lot to go through. That's been up put in since I've start to prepare to film this tour so I will just go through it throughout the video and just all the different parts I have in the room. And as you can see the collection is heavily expanded beyond just being Star Wars items and it has been for several years anyway just by what we've seen there and there's a few other bits to go through, a few, bit, a few new, newer bits as opposed to other, other bits but there's plenty to look through as we come along the collection so let's get in to the first part of it. So we're starting the main part of the collection with the Star Wars 3 and 3 quarter inch collection because it just seems right to start with that. So we start with the top shelf on the bookcase. Uh, this is the one that was attached to the wall and parts of the wardrobe as well was part of that. Uh, at the back there I have indeed put the Legacy Pack from the Black Series, the 40th anniversary for A New Hope. I still love this pack so much, like I, couldn't, I couldn't not put it on display somewhere and I thought this is actually a much better place to have it. And it's the same, it's the same old figures as before that we had in the previous pack and as we all know it was based on the original 1978, 77, 78 release that came out there. But we start with the top bit here, this is mainly Clone Wars that starts out towards here. A lot of different, a different variety of different things, you've got different different lines here, you've got classic Clone Wars line with the Count Dooku and the later packaging lines as a sort of change the packaging later on. And But yeah, of course you do have some of the realistic ones that we had in the vintage collection, like some of the more recent ones such as the Ahsoka here. And one of my most recent additions being the Jesse action figure there, because there was the there was originally a three pack of Arc Troopers that included these three, but I missed that. But then I was able to acquire Echo, and then I acquired Fives, and then I just managed to acquire Jesse after he was released individually recently. And then of course Rex in there too. But yeah, it starts to fade across mainly being canon Clone Wars, but towards the end uh, it, ch it changes a little bit because we do have some bits from the Mandalorian along here, as well as a bit of Book of Boba Fett, if you would count Fennec Shand under that line, and of course a little custom Mandalorian there, that's basically, um, it's the, uh, I believe it's the Tsaga, Tsaga or Six, uh, End or Luke, I took that and then I took the cape off Darth Malgus, and I was able to get myself a Luke Skywalker for the Mandalorian section, but you can see further back as well, I do have parts from the Legends Clone Wars, uh, this being both parts from the 2D micro series and other comic books, and other areas as well, including, these are the only two I have now, I gave you a review of Anakin recently, but I did manage to acquire Mace Windu off eBay, and of course, uh, Dirge, this was a more realistic one there, that was in there, included there, and as you can see behind there, I do still have the Lego Jabba's Palace, that's still standing, that's probably close enough to where it used to be with the Rancor Pit, I used to have it on the other side of the TV when I had this room previously, I've just looked back for old video footage just to see sort of where it was, but yeah, that's still where it was. I think see I've still got the SH figure arts layer, which always has a bit of a struggle standing up. So I've just sort of left it there for the time being, because it's just sort of a separate. There you go. It's just sort of a separate figure that I have along there, because I bought that from Tamashi Nations in Japan back in 2019, and I just finished right, just put in there with the rest of the collection, as opposed to in the any other main Black Series part that I have there. Of course, above this, I do have my Star Wars: A New Hope poster, still framed. Basically, just bought that from downstairs. That's there, and of course I do have the light, this is the art deco light you can get. You can either put it at the top of a shelf or fix it to a wall, you can sort of get them from gadget shops, sort of like Mankind. And you can put, there's a little switch on the side, which then just turns the light on. I know it's, it's during the day so it's not too great, but at night I can just be watching a film on the TV and it's just, it's excellent. As you can see I've got Crash Bandicoot on the other side, uh, favourite film, favourite game, it's a good, it's a good blend to have on this top shelf. There's of course two features on this, because I pressed it again. And this function it sort of fades down to dark, as you can just about see on the camera there, it fades to dark, then fades back up again. And then you just press it again, 
that turns off. Got it held on with nails on the wall at the minute. But yeah, that works out well. As you can see, I've got my TV there. I'll come back to that later on as I finish looking at the 3.75 collection. So we come down the shelf. We have what is the bulk majority of the 3.75 collection here. Uh, so it mainly, it, it mainly just goes through chronological order. But of course the Clone Wars just sort of left out in the Mandalorian just because that stuff's above. But we start with Phantom Menace figures. Uh, I managed to acquire a lot more of these older Phantom Menace figures from Toy Fairs. Uh, I've started to go, start, well, once I started properly working I was able to finally start going to those since the Covid restrictions got lifted as well. Uh, there's what, there's uh, one I might be missing, uh, it's the uh, start of October. I might end up missing that one though, but there should be one in December that I hopefully get a chance to go to. But I managed to gain a lot more of the older figures and really expanded my characters from this first movie because I really lacked on it. I just like had like two versions of Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan and Maul and that was like it with a few other a few other little bits in there, including this R2-D2 here, which is, uh, it still is a light and sounds one, but I don't I think it's just stopped now. There you go. Because this was, of course, uh, that was actually the very first figure I reviewed on the channel. And, yeah, know, knowing that my channel's going to be 10 years old, in just a few months' time, duh, uh, it's beyond me. <laughs> it's, it's wild, I think, that, to think that length of time has passed. We move further into the collection now, so we have Attack of the Clones. Uh, just a few, just yeah, just just a few select out figures there. Nothing too much change. It's just a few, just a few, a few random points with a few clones at the back there. Some Attack of the Clones ones at the back, but nothing much major in the words of in sort of the changing there. A lot of them are sort of the same as they were before last time. And then we move on to the Revenge of the Sith section, which is a much bigger collection. As what we had there. Of course, we got Anakin and Obi Wan slightly higher up in the background because that's them. They're actually on the Mustafar panning droid and lava platform, which is back there. But again, it's just full of random Jedi and random, another another random cluster of clones. Because you got some of the ones I managed to acquire off eBay. I managed to acquire the Commander Bakara there. I managed to acquire him. Uh, he's the one who shoots down Kiadi Mundi, and just other ones there. I mean, that Fire First was actually a Clone Wars release, but I think it just looked better on the Revenge of the Sith section. You know, R four G nine picked that one up at a toy fair as well. And this uh, Vader's medical droid, and there's Tion made on there behind Vader, so that's all right. And then I move on a bit further. We get uh, a few figures from Solo at the back there. Not very many. I've always I've sort of had a bit of a struggle at getting them in the th figures from that in the three point seven five. We have the Rebels. These are mainly five POA figures, but I like them. All, I like them all the same. I don't think we've had a single Rebels vintage collection figure actually released yet. So I hope they do get around to correcting that soon. And then we come to the end where we have Rogue One. Of course, Director Krennic at the front with his Death Troopers. And just, yeah, nothing's really changed on that line either. I've, I've not really had many to get in recent recent months, recent years. So it's nothing really major that's been improved on along there. But we might get some more with Andor in the 3.75 line. So we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. All right, so we come now down to the original trilogy figures in the 3.75 form. Uh, so we just mainly start with a new hope there. There's not too much added on in recent months, in recent years on the shelf. Uh, the only main additions I'd really say have been the Rogue One Vader, uh, Figurin Dan, and the Garindian Spy from the Power of the Force line back there. Uh, these are just ones I managed to acquire. Figurin Dan was a recent release in the Vintage Collection, so I was glad to pick him up. That's actually the Rogue One Vader from from the Vintage line, but I feel I felt it just looked better with the New Hope figures. Everything else is just kind of same old, same old from what it was before. There's a few good ones on there. But we move into the Empire Strikes Back as well. We've got quite a few new additions in this one as well, and some old ones. Uh, some have uh, replaced uh, five POA ones because the Luke Skywalker best bin Luke I've got there, that was a that's replaced a, a five POA Luke. Uh, I, funny enough, that five POA Luke was actually a replacement for an earlier version of this Luke Skywalker, which I the, I got back in 2010. I actually got the figure back in 2010. My dog mauled him, so. I ended up replacing him with the five o with the with this uh, with the five POA one, and the head of that one is actually on the stormtrooper Luke. There, that's actually the head that which managed to survive. So I managed to stick that on a stormtrooper and keep it safe. But uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, yeah, my dog had uh, mauled the original one, uh, but um, I finally managed to replace him a few months ago because I found him in game, dirt cheap. And I like yeah, that I'll, I'll take that. But yeah, everything else along there. We do have the classic duo three PO and R two lying along there. Uh, Vader, you know, you've know, you got Vader, you've got you know other characters in there, and the one put at the back there, I managed to pick him up and 
stand him in the back of the shelf there. He really suits it in there. And then we move into Return of the Jedi, and again we got a, a variation. I can't, I'd say this one has this part has grown a bit more. I've managed to acquire again more figures from this line because I got the Vintage Emperor, which again replaced a five POA one. The five POA one was great, but then I saw that and I just thought, you know what, I have to get this one and replace it. But there's others in there that have been fairly new, such as the Jabba's Sail Barge pack. I managed to get that for Christmas last year. And there's just several more just in there. Uh, and I also finally, a figure I never actually had in my collection, you can just see in the background there behind Chewbacca and the, the, bla the black uniformed Imperial officer, Nine Nun. I actually never had him until I went to a toy fair in April. So, yeah, never, never had him in the collection very much. We finally get along to figures from the sequel trilogy. And again, this, uh, it's just uh, they, they don't really release many of these lately, so I haven't really had many of these to add to the collection anyway. So this is kind. This is kind of pretty much the same as what it was back in 2019. There's not really anything new added there. I think maybe that's C3PO because that was one I just I, I bought that and then I just painted the arm red because I never gained a red arm C3PO back in 2015, and they never really released one since. So I just ended up making a custom because it was, uh, I was able to get that one cheap. Paint the arm red, and then he just goes in nicely with the Force Awakens lot, so that worked out for me pretty well. And we come down here to the first set of vehicles, so we have the Obi-Wan Starfighter, Anakin Starfighter, uh, intercept or Jedi Interceptor as we say there, uh, TIE Striker from Rogue One, takes up quite a bulk of space but it just about fits on there, and of course uh, the Jango Fett Slave One, or if you've been that inclined, Jango Fett's Starship, it's Slave One. But uh, yeah, that's that's there. But uh, I do I do like having that on the shelf. So we get to the other side now, and this is the majority of my Black Series collection. Uh, it's it's heavily expanded. This one has definitely expanded from the last one. I think it's just more it's more the fact that I was able to afford them and get some more of them when I had had my earlier job. So I was able to pick up some more of these and really grow the collection for what it was. I mean, I had uh, I think I, I don't know how many I've added since, but I've added quite a lot since uh, I was able to afford them more in the, the last year in a bit but we start there again Phantom Menace and I've not got many from the Phantom Menace I've only got like th I've only got three Phantom Menace Black Series figures it's just not major, major line I've been that invested in picking up I mean, I've, I've technically got four if you count the Mace Windu because that was released in Phantom Menace packaging but I think I'm glad with the Qui-Gon and the Maul they're the one they're the only re real aims of mine to get from the Phantom Menace so I've got those ones and they're going to add and again it's quite a small Attack of the Clones collection following it and again not many of them uh Django, Dooku, Anakin and Obi-Wan, Padme, Mace Windu and a phase one clone it's not really much but that's what I've got there and again the Clone Wars this is, this again I've just blended in Legends and Canon Clone Wars with this one as you see I just put the Arc Trooper Captain back there and of course the other ones dotted around that then fades into Revenge of the Sith which is just around there, you know, other ones around there. And Anakin, who notices, uh, I managed to get custom robes for Anakin, and as you notice, Qui-Gon was wearing one as well, because they never actually came with robes. I ended up getting them from a site called Scottacus Customs, and uh, they custom make them, and they really look prop accurate, like movie accurate, because I got Obi-Wan back there, who's wearing the one that came with the base window, but the one that the one that I got from Scottacus Customs really, really good, really is more superior. Like, that actually looks like a thing from the set. And the same goes with the Qui-Gon one. They, they really worked out well when I picked them up. They take a while to come because they're made to order, but they're worth the wait when they arrive. So that's that's worth an add. And then finally on there we get Thad Batch. I do have a full set of the actual clones because, as you, as you can see, I've got Omega, Echo and Hunter there in the foreground. Tech and Wrecker just behind. And... Bad Clone Force 99 Crosshair. There is two versions of Crosshair out, but I'm not bothered with the other one being the Imperial one, because of course he had, he received black, more darker armour following the Rise of the Empire. But I've just stuck there with the plain one. I've got, got there. And then just a few other figures from there. Uh, I've got some Jedi Fallen Order, Gaming Greats there, and uh, Force Unleashed one there. Uh, a few few stuck in there. It's nice, it was nice to have more than just Cal Kestis in this set. And then a little bit of Solo and a bit of Rebels there just to tie up the top shelf of Black Series and coming down to the shelf below we have more of the Rogue One kind of thing which does fade into A New Hope I've sort of put, sort of tried to make it in a way you could sort of have both in 
one. Uh, as you see, I've got like I've tried tried to get Tarkin sort in the middle there. Uh, would probably do the same if I do end up acquiring uh, Ponda Barber and Doctor Evers and sort of have them half in the half in the Rogue One section, half in the Episode Four section, because of course they're both from the same film. So yeah, that, that goes in pretty well there. But Rogue One was quite a big bit of Black Series collecting for me back in 2016. As you see, I've got sort of a blend between some of the 2016 releases and the re-releases. Where if you look at the Jin and the Chirrut, because that's the original Jin sculpt. Whereas Chirrut is the updated sculpt. So there's a bit of a difference there. Uh, New Hope, this is basically just any figures that weren't made for the stand. So as I said, Tarkin's there, Greedo's there, and just several others. We fade again into Empire Strikes Back. And the main highlight of that has to be the bounty hunters, which I have at the back there. Uh, try to get them in the order they're in when they're stood on the executor in the Empire Strikes Back, uh, and that just about works out for me there. What they got, you know, Dengar, Boba, Bosk, etc., etc. At the front there, a bit of an Imperial bit at the front. It's just a bit of a mix and match, really, as to what goes on. And then across the other end, we have. A small amount of Return of the Jedi. Don't have again. Don't have many of them on this shelf in Return of the Jedi, but there's a few select figures that I have managed to pick up. And then we got to the sequel trilogy, which is all sort of just crammed in <laughs> again with all that. Uh, I've managed to acquire a few more of these from the Rise of Skywalker in uh, recent months because I was able to find it. Because I wasn't actually able to afford most of those when they originally came out, uh, but I managed to acquire a few more in the edition and the course on the ground. We do have BB-8 in that. So there's a few, there's a few good additions that I was able to make there, in regards to that. And of course, I've got Snoke in the back corner there. I just want Hasbro to sort of, you know, I, th I really, I really think they need to take the risk and just put some more of these out. I know they say, I know they say it's a lack of, the rumor is it'd be a lack of the worry, the worry of a lack of sale. But I, I just think, you know what, put it out. We're getting like, we're getting like twenty versions of the Mandalorian. Can't we, just, can't we just get one of these instead? You know, I, I, saw, I saw that Amazon three pack as well. I know I'm going on a bit of a rant here, but I would have rather picked up a figure of a Legion General Pride than. You know, uh, another version of the Mandalorian. <laughs> it's just that's just my way of seeing it. But yeah, that's the main majority of my main part of the Black Series display, which I have on this shelf, on these two shelves here. And that really, really does look great to look at when I'm looking at it. And we just go up to the major part of the top part of the shelf here. Of course, I keep my Xbox here. I still use that. And as you can see, I've got a bit of a sound system going on with a projector on top. I bought one of these back at Christmas. Because I just wanted one, and uh, it really works out well. I, I do have a portable screen for it, which is just to the left there by the posters. But I'll show that again later on when we get there. And then, of course, this was a sound system originally bought for it, uh, but it works really well with the TV as well. So uh, when I'm not using the projector, I still keep it plugged into the TV because it just really, it really, it really is crisp to hear it come out of that rather than the TV internal speaker. There's just a few bits I've got lying around there. Bosk, the pop vinyl. It's, the only one, it's one of only two that I've actually got out on display right now. I've only got him out there because I couldn't find his box. So I just thought I'll just keep him on there on display. Uh, that's a carded Jangle Fett from 2002. This is the Geonosis one that had a uh, has a magnetic head. I got a deflector case for this one because I just <laughs> I just felt the need to and keep it in mint condition or, or as mint as possible condition from what I can have. So it's uh, you know it's survived pretty well there. And of course, on the wall there, I've got two more uh, Revenge of the Sith figures, which are also in protector cases. So Count Dooku and Battle Damaged Anakin. I still remember buying that. I bought that now about about four years ago, that Anakin. And I'd, I'd always hunted for that. And then I saw it in, uh, there was a shop in Wall's End that uh, just sold retros, retros figures and that. And I saw that, and just seeing, I was, I was, I wanted to open it, but just seeing how good the packaging was in, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So I've left it carded, and on the shelf. I do have more carded figures, but I don't have them on dis as many of them out on display right now. They're sort of just stored away, uh, but safely stored away so that they don't get damaged. So, but I'm hoping to buy sort of deflector cases for them, just so that they stay in safe condition. But that's all I got in regards to them right now. And just on the top there. Got Lego Luke on his Tonton, just there to look great on the speaker, and Master Chief just guarding my Xbox, as he does. <laughs> so yeah, that's just about what I've got on the top shelf there. So move a bit further down the shelves and see what's down there. Okay, so we're now underneath the vehicles, and this is the first part of the Blu-ray collection, which is quite big, <laughs> very big. Uh, so we start here with the end there. So this is sort of the. Uh, Little parts of Disney Blu-rays that I do have. Uh, I know, I know we have Disney Plus 
in this day and age and I do have it and I do use it but I, I, I often do like to get a Blu-ray or a DVD out. Some films I just have to get especially for what I really like uh, I've seen this because there's the five I've got on there they're like my top five Disney animated films that I've got right there. They're, they're, my, they're my five favourite of all time. They're just in their order of release on the numbers there because they do have their classic numbers. And then of course the box sets for Toy Story and The Incredibles. I just wanted them on Blu-ray and Into the Woods. That's just one I got because I wanted to see it. But of course we've got Woody on Bullseye and The Alien guarding it. These are from the Toy Box collection. I've had a struggle putting most of these out on the shelves since I got them, but I've got them there. So we've got my premium collection of films there with the Vader mask in front of it. Uh, my favourite one of these being the uh, John Bowman film, Excalibur. This one stars, uh, you might recognise uh, Liam Neeson, Helen Mirren and Patrick Stewart before he was uh, Jean-Luc Picard actually in this one. But it has Nigel Terry and Cherry Lungian as well. They play Arthur and Guinevere. It's definitely one worth watching, absolutely. We come along even further where we have the... Uh, this is probably the biggest of the collector's editions that I have. This is the Arrow video films. Uh, there's a lot of these I have and these are all these are almost always really good. I've got these uh, Hot Wheels and uh, Fighters all in front of it. Of course, apart from that, which is Black Series. But yeah, these are all in front of it, guarding it. Guarding the collection. It's never too much of an issue if I want to get a certain one out, because I can just move that, like, I can just move Darth Vader's type out of the way, and if I wanted to watch The Giver, which has Mark Hamill in, it's worth a watch, that one. Uh, I can just move that out of the way, get what I want, and then put it back. Uh, there's, a few, there's a few notable casts in these films as well, like 12 Monkeys, that had Bruce Willis, Madeline Stowe, and Brad Pitt in it. And, uh, as I said, Blood Tide had James Earl Jones, and The Giver had Mark Hamill in, and they were really good. <laughs> I'd definitely say they're worth for it. And uh, again, Tales of Terror, they were Roger Corman films with Vincent Price in. And there's that top one there, Network Twins of Evil, that has Peter Cushing in. That's uh, that's one of his horrors from back in then, from back from, like, when he was in Hammer Horror, Horror Films. But again, other ones in there, Matinee, that's a great one. Uh, it's one I would recommend on there. John Goodman's in that. And it's like, it's like funny. It's like funny serious, that one. It's like the, there's this genuine fear. It, it's, sort, it's sort of like a play on the whole, how the, the, there was that War of the Worlds broadcast that caused the worry. It's sort of a similar like that, but like with a nuclear attack, and it's it is it is really well done. It's like it's that bit at the end with the film, and you realize, oh right, yeah. But that's uh, that's the Arrow video films, and of course Arrow Academy, which is sort of a a similar version. Uh, Hunt there with Mads Mikkelsen, who plays Galen Erso in Rogue One, and uh, Le Chief in Casino Royale. He's on that one as well, and then you've just got the Sony Pictures ones. Just, I, I would just put these ones together just because they're in that sort of collection. With their numbers there, and they just they it just it just feels right to have them all together. What they are, I mean that one there is my favourite one there, Das Boot, or Das Boot, however you want to say it, the German war one with the sub. Close Encounters is in there, that's great too. So a lot of these, and this one's worth the set through for four hours. So yeah, some good ones there. And you just get we start moving into the basic collection there. As you can see here, some of my cases are actually slimmer than other ones, and that was a that was something I did on purpose because I had a bit of a spatial issue back when I was in my old room and I wanted to sort of save some space up on the Blu-rays and so I just bought a pack of slim ones cheap for about well not cheap about 30 quid they cost me and that was like 50 of them in a pack so I did that and then transferred several of them into the packs there I tried to be sort of pick and choosy with them regardless of just on which ones I wanted to have uh, again some of them look special cases because American Psycho here is a black case so I thought you know what that one's staying as is but like ones that were just in basic blue cases, but I can still see the film's title on the side. That's how it went for me there. So that's basically the top shelf of Blu-rays that I've got there. Uh, it's all just sort of the same kind of thing, uh, just standard. They're, they're, they're mainly the collector's editions or just different collections that go along there. We'll come down now to the next shelf. Uh, this is just more of them lying along there. We've got a Stormtrooper light, Mood Light, which is there. The batteries have been out on that. I actually might need to replace them, but... Uh, yeah, because I've tried, I've tried lighting that earlier and it's just not showing up. But behind there, uh, we've got the highlight, main, main highlight of the first part of the collection, uh, Batman films. And I try to keep this all in alphabetical order. So you notice that I've only got uh, the Batman 66 film, the anthology pack for the Michael Keaton and George Clooney and George Schumacher ones, shall I say. The Batman from this year, Robert Pattinson, really good. And of course I've only got like Batman Begins and Batman vs Superman there. See the, the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises are a bit further down the shelf because of that. But yeah, I've got a few more coming along there. And as you can see there, I've just sort of worked in the ones where basically I can see what the film is on the side. And there's some good ones on there as well. Blade Runners and that. John Favreau's film Chef. And Crazy Rich Asians, that was a 
strange one. A, fu a fun strange one, to say the least. Uh, Danny Boyle. And of course, in front I've got more uh, vehicles on display. A Die Hard box set, that's there. And I've got Troop Transport from Rogue One, and then just some other bits. And Bob's just sort of guarding it there. I can always add like more little figures to this side, this part of the shelf as well, if I wanted to. But come along there. Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining. Good film. And... Uh, let's get Carter there, one of my favourites, next to Get Out. And just many more along there. Uh, Invisible Man. There's a few more I'm wanting to add to this collection. But there's more to see on the later shelves, so that's definitely there. So there's not as many on this shelf as before. Uh, just This is just more standard Blu-rays, uh, put, put in alphabetical order. That's how I've sort of sorted it. And just more ships in front of it. And we come down to the, fin to the final shelf of Blu-rays. Of course we have Deadpool guarding the first one with the Lord of the Rings box set behind there. That's the extended cuts, all on Blu-ray. Uh, I know they've got had a 4K Blu-ray reissue recently, but I've stuck to the just the standard Blu-ray. That's all, it, all I need really for these films. And then just further along, we've just got more films there. I mean, more films got more things guarding them. Thunderbird one and Thunderbirds one and two. Such a nostalgic show for me there. And of course we do lead into the Star Wars. As, as you can see, I've sort of got Rogue One separate from the rest of the Star Wars lot. And as is Solo as well. I've got the Batman, Batmobile, which is still stored in that case. I mean, I've, ne I've never taken it out since I got it like five years ago. And I just, I, I like it in the case as is. It just, it feels better to keep it in as is, just avoids it being damaged. Of course the main initial standard Blu-rays of the Star Wars films are there. Uh, as I said. Rogue One's there, Solo's there, got Star is Born between them, but the standard nine are there. Just some other films above there. And three Batman vehicles. So I've got the Bat Pod from the Dark Knight, Tumblr Batmobile, and a 60, uh, eight, sorry, 89, the 89 Batmobile. That's probably my favourite version of it, just on toy hand that I've got. I mean, it slides open. <laughs> That's just, I bought, I bought these from like B&M, these like Hot Wheels ones. Cheap, they were cheap, and I just got them. And of course, I've got the hip flask next to it. It's not in there, but it's always good for keeping a bit of uh, whiskey if I wanted to. And then just more Blu-rays at the back there. Top Gun being among them there. Of course, I had the new film came out recently. Terminator films in there. I've only got those three on Blu-ray. I've never got round to completing the set and getting the other. I mean, I've, still, I've, I've got the first one on DVD still, but I've never got. I never bothered. I, I've just never got round to getting the first one on Blu-ray. And I also don't have Rise of the Machines or Salvation, but I've got. I've got Judgment Day, Terminator 2, Terminator Genesis, and Dark Fate there. Again, we all love that one. Uh, this one, and these two are just hit and, hit and miss among fans. Uh, but that's what I've got to say there. Then just other films I've got lying there and there, just as it comes towards the numbers with 2001 A Space Odyssey at the end there. So we come up now to what is basically an overspill of the Blu-ray collection. Uh, this is, again, more uh, sort of... Uh, you know, collector edition kind of things. Uh, steel books in hand there. A lot of these are duplicates. Uh, some, some of these are, I should say some of them are. Uh, some of the films I already had, and I just wanted to, I saw the steel book, decided I wanted that. I mean, it's primarily that one. Once upon a time in Hollywood, that one's a duplicate. Uh, that one's a duplicate from DVD, Skyfall there. And uh, not all the Star Wars films so far. I've got Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and The Last Jedi. So I'm missing Revenge of the Sith, The New Hope, The Force Awakens, and... Rise of Skywalker on Steelbook. As you can see, I've got a Luke Skywalker's lightsaber there in front of it. But there's some good ones I've got in there as well. These two I had to get on Steelbook. So I ended up getting a quiet place on Steelbook. And then part two got delayed due to the uh, pandemic. But eventually I managed to pick it up from HM. For, I think I had to get off Amazon in the end because HMV weren't letting people uh, reserve copies of it. Uh, Atomic Blonde, I love that film. Like, I really love that one. That, that was one I initially had on standard Blu ray. But I ended up upgrading it. And I just sold off the standard Blu ray. But the rest of these are just uh, what I've got there, so some good ones there. And the Sleeping Beauty one's Mondo artwork. I wanted to get one of these in the line, and that was the one that was on Zabby that I could get. And I love that artwork on the front there. Of obviously you've got Maleficent there, and Princess Aurora and Prince Philip. I mean, you never actually see them fight together in the film anyway, but it's it's a good set there. Uh, obviously you've got some other overspill Blu-rays up on the top. This is just because the shelf as I had were full. And I've got this Elvis film, The Searcher. Uh, there is the new Elvis film, which is out with uh, Austin Butler as Elvis. That was a, That's worth a watch. Um, my dad's a big Elvis fan. I went with him to see it, and he absolutely loved it. 
and we get along now to my 4k films not got many of them i mean they are just you know some of the, these ones are just, are just the star wars ones uh i know we had the box set that came out in 2020 but i sort of decided to myself if i was going to get them on 4k i wanted them individually i didn't want them on standard on the full box set because I, I thought i like though i like some of the artwork that they had for these films i mean i'll just get the attack of the clone ones one out you know the artwork that they got for these it was new covers for them and then i just thought to myself yeah if i'm gonna get new ones i'm gonna get i'm gonna get these i don't i don't want the near where the you know the case says the empire strikes back one as well again another another great one i love how that one sort of incorporates the the classic poster for empire but then it sort of just adds more in with boba and yoda so that's a, that's a good one that, that's probably my favorite one of the reader ones with the collectible sleeves so i would i would prefer to hope to get that full collection uh, once we at least have episodes one through nine on that we'll get there but of course my, i've only got three other standard 4ks some of the steelbooks do have 4k in them like a quiet place that does and so that's there that's just a few extra rollover blu-rays i have there annette that one had uh marion cotillard and adam driver in and simon helberg that was a that was a strangely good one uh simon helberg is also in that he's not on the cover but uh, we all know simon helberg is howard wallowitz that's on there it's just a uh, i don't have it's not really part of the collection yet but that, like if i was to get other editions that would come as part of a collector's edition but the rest of these are just a few other extra films that i bought after putting in i've got a, that is probably one as well i would recommend it's called herself so it has claire dunn uh harriet walter the niece of christopher lee and uh conleth hill from game of thrones and the main point of this one is it does have the score was done by natalie holt who did the score for kenobi a uh, good series it's a great series kenobi actually i've got i've got to admit so yeah that's 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 a film i would just i would work, recommend out for what is there and then just further along there we just have a few extra overdone dvds excuse me on the shuffle on the floor there uh st dvd steelbooks uh we don't really get many of them but they're around and of course my standard dvd star wars box sets the star wars films still signed by david prowse after all those years same one it's there the late late david prowse as well because of course he did pass away at the end of 2020 sadly and then just on the end there we have a vhs range these were sort of like films that were already out but uh reissued as a vhs range so i got beverly hills cop there it's a vhs style box uh, it was dvd it's a dvd and a blu-ray inside but you get sort of like it's sort, of, it's sort of like a collector's edition box so you get a few little uh, extra little goodies in there along with the film so yeah uh it's sometimes nice just to have that for films you want i mean my my brother my brother's not quite so much of a film collector but they had a version of the blues brothers out on that and i just i gave it to him for his birthday because i just thought he'd like what was in it and he, he really did he appreciated that so yeah so that's just what i got on the main this is this is the main blu-ray part of the collection it's not all my films i do have another set to go on the bookcase but the blu-rays do last along all of that so yeah and we come down to the bottom shelf of that that's the this is sort of my first rundown of some of the big books that i do have in my set uh of course a lot of these are stuff i've not really shown on the camera yet more recently i mean some of the stuff i have because it was just uh, dotted around the previous room and it's stuff i've had for a while but some of it i've added since and it's it's not it's not just star wars it's a wide variety of stuff there so you've got derry girls uh erin's diary that's sort of a novelization of the tv show derry girls uh it's, it's sort of a novelization slash reference book so that works there but you've got another wide variety you know wallace and gromit in there as well uh some james bond omnibus as we've seen and there's a few other art books coming along there and uh i've started to add a small collection of railway books into my set there so as you see i've got that one of the talaclin railway in color i bought that when i went to talaclin back in july with my friends jack luke and robin so that's there and of course i've got the railway series next to that and then just a few other this is the main part of the star wars books that i've got along there you know storyboards visual guides and just other reference books battles that changed the galaxy mickey mouse museum on the end there and then just a few books on top again some more train books you know great northeastern railway route the flying scotsman audrey steam railways this is a uh, chris audrey not the reverend audrey but uh, that's a good look into some steam railways i picked that up at the wensleydale railway and i've just got a bit of insight uh, to some of the, the other railways there and of course virgin trains a decade of progress so yeah i've started to buy i've started to buy a few more books on trains more recently because uh, it was gner that was that was kind of my childhood for train riding because of course living in newcastle i'm on the east coast main line 
So that's sort of like the city, that's the line served by the city. Whereas Virgin Trains would be the West Coast main line. So, you know, JNR's King's Cross to Edinburgh, Virgin Trains, Euston to Glasgow. So, yeah, I've got a bit of a train knowledge there. I even set up a train Instagram. So, that's something to add there. You can even follow me on that if you wanted to. And I've got two board games along there Escape the Death Star and Hoth Ice Battle Planet Adventure. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll get one for Return of the Jedi. Well, that's 40th next year. But uh, we'll have to see what, what happens with that. And we've had a few pipeline reveals already. And I believe there should be another bit more of a figure announcement coming soon. But I can assume that we will get retro collection figures for Return of the Jedi. So I'm hoping we get... Like, if it's if it's going to be a Return of the Jedi board game, it'll probably be some Endor board game. Uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably do some uh, Googling after this and see what, what did come out around about the 80s that fit Return of the Jedi. But that's there. I do also have a lot of the retro collection figures actually inside there because there, there was a lot of that extra space because of course the Escape from the Death Star came with an exclusive Tarkin figure and then the Hoth, Hoth Ice Planet Adventure game came with a Luke but there's so much extra space in there and I ended up keeping my retro collection figures carded so I've got I've got ones of Luke, Vader and Leia in the A New Hope one they're sort of in there, stored in their safe and I've got some Mandalorian ones inside the Hoth one so there's plenty there to keep safe so yeah but that is of course the uh, first part of the book collection. Alright, so we come to the wall that faces away from the window. So we start mainly with the BVS poster which we have there, and uh, just a few things I have on the wall. Uh, this is just the standard Mandalorian Darksaber, it's not the Black Series one, it was the 30 quid one, but I thought, you know, I wanted to keep this on the wall, just because of how much I liked it. I love just being able to turn it on. I mean, you might have been able to see this in the background in some of my other videos, but at, again, at night, that shines up well, especially with the Batman Moodlight underneath it as well. Right, that works there. I mean, it was one of the first things I bought when I started my previous job. I uh, haven't been able to get it from Smith's, so that worked out for me there. And of course, on the floor, we've got my guitar and the amp, along with some guitar accessories down there, you know, picks and uh, capo material. And then on this bookcase, uh, this was a newer bookcase I added in. Uh, this was when I was originally in the room upstairs, but I ended up moving it down here, along with pretty much everything else. Uh, I have a bit of a small Talaken Railway shrine of souvenirs of things that I got there. Uh, there's a lot you can get there, because I got this uh, Talaken glass at the pop-up pub. Uh, both my friend Jack and I each got one at the pub. And we got our Talaken coaster. And of course, um, uh, this is just, I bought, I've kept the container for this. Plot cream shortbread, it's just a lovely picture of the Talaken Railway there. And then just a few of the bits. Of course, you might have noticed in my vlog, if you have watched it, we were all walking around with numbered badges that were representing the uh, engines we were meant to be represented by the coloured clothes we were wearing. It's a, it's, a, it's a long story behind that, but basically my... my uh, I was wearing a green... I was wearing a Boba Fett t-shirt that had green on it, so that would represent Peter Sam, who was number four. And of course, this was an exclusive pin, which we got from the picnic. Uh, we got a goodie pie for the picnic, and this was just an exclusive pin we got in there. And this was just a postcard I bought with the engine Dolgok. Uh, he, of course, wasn't at the event when I was there because he was being under maintenance. But I saw that postcard in the gift shop and I'm like, I like that so much. I'm, I'm going to get a frame and stand it there. I've got a few other ones framed up, which you'll see later on in the video. But yeah, that's the starting point there. And of course, behind there, I have the Incredible from The Incredibles. And Mr. Incredible just sat there driving it. It's the only place I could really put that at the minute where it's safe, but I, ha I am sort of hoping to get another bookcase to sort of have just as, d to devote to the Railway stuff in my collection, just being a bit of a rail enthusiast. That's just, yeah, I'm, I'm basically going to get a shelf that will just store all the Railway books and then just all this memorabilia from Tyler Clinn, that unless it goes on the wall of course, so yeah, that's just a starting point there. But we come below that, and we have my Crash Bandicoot and Spyro collection. Uh, this has kind of remained the same, to be honest, from when I last showed it, I think it was back in 2019 I last showed it, I've just, it's not that, not that I couldn't afford anything, I just, I've just struggled to find anything that I actually wanted out of the Crash Bandicoot line, but uh, we still got some of the standard stuff, you know, Totaku, Spyro, Crash, Coco Cortex, Necker Crash and Spyro, little uh, Crash light there, got the cable guys holding my old Xbox controller, uh, as you did notice I do have an Xbox One uh, S, as you probably saw back there, because my original Xbox One died, <laughs> unfortunately, so I just switched in. I've got the lamp there, it's a bit dusty, but uh, Crash is in there with a happy expression. And then behind there I've got a golden toe tack of Crash. I haven't actually, you probably noticed that I haven't actually got any merch from Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time in there. And yeah, again, I've just sort of struggled to find anything I actually wanted out of it, so I've just left it. But coming down below now, 
Uh, it's another little selection of books that I've got. These are mainly art books. Uh, so Justice League and Wonder Woman. Uh, again, they're art books. On the front lines, that's a Star Wars reference book. It just fit. It, did, it didn't fit on the other bookcase, so that one's been moved to here. And then again, the Ready Player One art book. I really like that because I, I, I like that film. It's a good. It's a good film, and the book's even better. So that adds to there. And then of course other art books and the Simpsons. It's sort of like that. That also helps you draw like characters. This is a. I'd say this is a good one if you want to go into animation. Definitely have a book like this one, the Simpsons Handbook. So just get, it gives you some drawing tips and that, just for that kind of thing. And then at the back there, I've just got all different graphic novels. Again, these are a mix of uh, Star Wars, Legends and Canon, primarily, apart from the few Simpsons ones I've got at the end there and the DC ones I've got on top. Uh, so I've just, I've just blended it in because of course High Republic there. That one is called Canon. These are from the Clone Wars Multimedia Project. I've only got four of them so far. Uh, I was able to get these in Forbidden Planet pretty cheap. And yeah, the rest, it's the same with most of the rest of these. I've only got like a, I haven't got like a definitive like one through how many they've made sort of thing in regards to that. Because these ones start with Dark Times. These are just three random ones in the line there. Three random volumes. They're not volumes one through three or anything like that. Uh, the Darth Vader Dark Lord of the Sith one. These ones though are uh, chronological because these ones take place immediately after Revenge of the Sith in canon whereas that one takes place between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back and then this, again so it's a mix between legends and canon so th like these ones up here are legends and then th these two here are canon setting place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi so it's a good little selection I've got there and of course these are four out of six of my Rise of Skywalker cinema cups I have the others on the other side of the room, so they'll be over there and they'll appear later in the video. And of course next to that I have two get my music speaker and then two gaming towers uh, of, of my Xbox games. Got a variety I've got there, as I said, I've got, my, I've got the three Crash Bandicoot ones for the Xbox, so that goes nicely there. And then further down to the Star Wars ones. And then others further down there. Just a good selection there. With two more steelbooks at the bottom there. Yes, yeah, so that is my video game collection there. It's not, I do have a lot more on the digital side of things. But I don't tend to collect that many physical games anyway. The latest one I got was Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Which I've played through. It's great. <laughs> I, just, I think it's great. There's more to come to it as well. So I look forward to playing some more of that in the near future. So now we come to the uh, bookcase. Of course, this was the main bookcase that was in the background of most of my videos when I was uh, in my old room. So, just start on the side there, I've just got some key rings of Millennium Falcon and the Porg, just hanging off the side there. And this is sort of where they met the majority of the non-Star Wars collection, excuse me, majority of the non-Star Wars collection comes into play here. So we'll start on the top shelf here. Uh, just, again, this is just a lot of miscellaneous items. I've got, like, you know, I've got like Superman from Zack Snyder's Justice League, Steppenwolf from the original Justice League, Batman and Superman big figs there with Kylo Ren next to them. You know, the talking Darth Vader from the Disney store. And then moving along there, you know, I've got the big R2-D2 from the Disney store. You know, this is a, just a Jango Fett figure that I've got there. This is, a, this is another one that had a bit of the dog victim incident originally. And again, I was able to replace him from the Toy Fair. The original story of that one is the dog. My dog uh, bit off the head. You know, this is the one with the swivel head, like the one that was massively produced back in like 2002. So I went to a Toy Fair and I just bought one that was... I managed to buy one that didn't have the helmet for about two quid. And that just did it and just replaced the head. I did. I did originally take the original body and I glued a, I glued another an unused head on it. But I was glad to find one that had a Django head that I could just use. Little Vader statue there, and of course Luke constructing the lightsaber from one of the best scene, deleted scenes from the films. And then just the Solo Falcon from the Disney store to close that off. So it's, again, just a load of miscellaneous items that are on this top shelf. But you come down to the first one down. And this is the DC figure collection, the primary bulk of it. And uh, yeah, it's not, again, not really much changes on this. I don't really get too much of it too often. So the only two new additions on this being the Robert Pattinson Batman there and Batgirl. A lot of this is all just the same as what was on there before. You know, Arkham Knight Batman, and then just Mattel DC Universe stuff there. So there's not really much on there. Uh, this is probably a brand new shelf. Uh, this one, this one didn't, didn't exist when I last filmed the collection update. So this is my Fantasia Focus shelf. Uh, this started in 2021, early 2021, when I bought this. Uh, it's just a statue of Mickey 
from the Sorcerer's Apprentice sketch in Fantasia when he charms broomsticks to come to life and pour water into the uh, into the into the vat into sort of a cauldron and then it's more there. Uh, Fantasia is my favourite Disney film. I, mean, I, bought, I bought a steelbook there. That's in the background there. That's a seal. That's a sealed steelbook I got for eleven quid off eBay. Got the key there. Uh, Mickey ears from Disneyland in Tokyo. Chalice, and yeah, just some other bits that try. Try. I've. I've I'd, I like to you know incorporate other parts of the film into it as well. So this is a. This kind of has a merger because you got the uh, Nutcracker sweet part at the bottom there. For, this is when the mushrooms do their their dance. Uh, Sorcerer Apprentice there. Night on Bald Mountain with the Chernoborg, which is probably the best part of the film. And uh, of course, from Sixth Pastoral Sym Symphony there. Some keep some pin badges again. More of the ones trying to work in. Sixth Pastoral, Night on Bald Mountain, and Dance of the Hours. And then of course you've got a standard uh, Disney Infinity Mickey from there. Fantasia key pin there, and then of course another ornament inside there. And then I've got a glass coaster there, which is based off some of the. Uh, you might be familiar with that artwork there. I've forgotten the name of the artist who did that, but that is on there. You might have seen the artist that 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 tries to blend all of them in. There you go. That's better. But yeah, that tries to blend them all in when you see the film, all the parts of the film in together as one. You might have seen that piece, piece of artwork before, but it is there on my shelf. And to get over to the final top one, this is the Terminator shelf. And again, this is not another one where not massively much has changed, except I have added, there's a Sarah Connor from Dark Fate in the background there. And I finally managed to pick up, because had, I've had the NECA T1, T800 from Terminator 2 for some time, and the T1000. And then on Star Action Figures, I think just when I got the just after Christmas, I ended up uh, purchasing the Sarah and John Connor two pack. I know I know they were released individually beforehand, but to finally get them together as a pack was great. Just to finally get them in a bigger scale, that wasn't just the retro figures because these are all the same ones that were there before. So it's good to have just sort of a blend between the retro figures and the Necker, and of course the big head, in which I do store a lot of the accessories. I'm trying not to drop anything there. But the accessories are kept in there, which is great. That, that comes in handy, very, very handy. That's like, that, that, like that piece has really come in handy over the years since I got it. And then of course there's a metal edition of Terminator 2 back there. This is the Momentum DVD from, uh, I think it's like 2000, 2001. But that's, uh, yeah, I like to have that there just to show off there. Like Sort of like how I have with the Fantasia Steelbook. That sort of adds there. And again, yeah, that just, that works out great. So it's just sort of three dedicated shelf sections to there, I don't really have a specific Star Wars dedicated shelf on this bookcase, but I've, there's probably one that I'd say is the closest, which is further down because you start here with the DVDs. Uh, again, it's got a lot of a uh, wide variety of these. And of course, I've got the Aston Martin from Casino Royale guarding this one. That's actually like a it kind of looks like a little model set piece on the bottom as well from the parking lot in uh, where, where, the, where, the, where the casino po the poker match is taking place. So yeah, that works out well for that. It's a, it's a good, it's a good piece of artwork that. But yeah, up on the top we got just a random selection of DVDs. Again, these are sorted alphabetically, so I do sort of have my animated Batman films all sorted together. There, I mean, I do have one more, but that's down at the S because it's, it's a Superman one as well, so it's down at the S section. There's a wide variety I've got there. Then we move along where we have the Blade Runner twenty forty nine set. These are the same ones I've had before. Uh, from what I know, Wallace from Blade Runner twenty forty nine is still actually available at Star Action Figures, so. Yeah, if I do if I do feel the need to add him, I can always just buy him and get him in. But I've got a good little selection, more DVDs back there. And some fantastic films back in there. You know, Chicken Run, that's still a great one. Coraline I picked up as well last year. I can't believe I actually missed that, but I managed to pick that up off eBay cheap and I watched it. It was so good. And it's one of my favourites right there, Briggsby Bear from 2017 with Mark Hamill in. I remember talking about that back in uh, 2017, good film. I move further on where this time we have the uh, Aston Martin from Goldfinger. And Goldeneye, and Skyfall, and even uh, Casino Royale, and Spectre, and No Time to Die. But the yeah, the classic DB5. This is the Goldfinger variant because you've got sort of a, it's sort of like the ground in France where he's driving it through in the film, and it does have the uh, sort of sideways drill kind of thing. And this one again, this one I got from a toy fair, and it was already like partly opened anyway, so I was happy to have it there with the little, with the model set on the side of the road. Uh, and there is actually a little James Bond in there, which is great. But yeah, I got another more set of the DVDs there, and just another wide variety. As I said, it's alphabetical order. Uh, as I was mentioning about Das Boot earlier, this is the this this actually isn't the same film as the one I had there because the one I had down on the other shelf is the director's cut from which was like put in the, like the nineties, the late nineties. Whereas this is the uncut five-hour extended version of the film, 
Uh, so this like this is like because originally that was put in as a TV mini series, like in the eight in the in the eighties when it was put on TV. So then that was that's sort of how that went out, and then that was sort of merged in to make a director's cut. But this is the full uncut version. It's like five hours long. I still I still have yet to sit and watch the full five hour version, but I watched the three hour version a few times, and it's great. But further down. I do have to get around to finishing it off there, but we do have some other good films on there. That one was an unexpected surprise, Dora and the Lost City of Gold, because I did not grow up with Dora the Explorer, so that's a worth one there. Uh, Emma with Annie Taylor-Joy in, she's a, she's, she's a really up-and-coming actress there, and from things like The Queen's Gambit and that, but that's a good one. I'd say definitely check that one out too, if you can. And just another little uh, variation there. Of course, Goldeneye, great Bond film on there. So yeah, got uh, more on there. I'll move down to the next shelf. We have Master Chief Guarding. I think I've just got it because the game's H Halo, and then I've just got the you know the H section of the collection there. I think that's, that there's one of my favourites on there, Henry V, with Ken Branner in, and just everything else I've got further down. Iron Giants among there as well. I'll just move the deodorant out of the way so you can see what I've got there. Uh, yeah, that's one of the few Marvel films I've actually got there. I had the Captain America films on the shelf above. Excuse me, but aside from that, I've only got Guards of the Galaxy. And I've only got these two Harry Potters in my... In my collection, I'm, I know I do have the, the others are in the house, but they're downstairs, like they've got their own lot. But I, I ended up just having these two because I think I, I I quite like these two, but I'm I'm not one of those fans who's gonna get people who's gonna get like all of them, like every edition and that. But yeah, I like I like having those two because again the, the the franchise is okay to watch every once in a while, but I'm not that massively into it. Hotfuls in there as well, uh, in between us, in between us two. I should just do a separate video on this. Really, I'll think about it. We we'll move along there even further. More DVDs to come. David Bowie and Labyrinth. I just saw the new documentary film, uh, Moon Age Daydream. Uh, I quite like that over films like Elvis and uh, uh, Rocket Man and Bohemian Rhapsody, just because we had some more, more sort of more. It was more document. I just like the more documentary style it had, as opposed to just dramatizing their life with an actor. Because I do have him next to his own film, Labyrinth, right there. So that's good there, and just some more another wide variety there. Come along even further, I just have Commander Neo on a bark speed. I don't know if I were first one, but that works there. Unfortunately, I don't have a Stasily that's able to go on the side of the bark speeder, so I just thought when I got Commander Neo in the Black series, I thought, yeah, he'll be fine on there. That'll be fine. And of course, I've got a clone trooper pin badge there with it as well. And just some more good films lined up there on the DVD section kind of thing. I see No Attempt to Die, which I've got there. And uh, just others there. You know, many of you might have seen this one when you're in school on Mice and Men, English Lessons. Uh, and there's one of my favourite ones as well. I think that one, that one has sort of a sentimental part to me there because I think just the circumstances of how I ended up getting the film in the first place and watching it, uh, I don't really talk about it. So I just that, that's sort of just how I ended up getting it. Just it just kind of has that good bit of history for me. That's all I say. But we'll move down even further now. So we got uh, more films. Another one there. Got some of the uh, robot chicken ones on the top there. And again, I've done the same thing I did with the DVDs with the Star Wars ones. So basically, Rogue One is there, but the rest of the Star Wars films are further along. It's the same with uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, because that Rise of the Planet of the Apes is there, but Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is actually up on the top part of the shelf. And I actually never got War for the Planet of the Apes, so I should get around to correcting that soon. You probably see here, I've got uh, parts of the Black Series packaging. So these are just the mural parts of the side. Like I really like these when I was reviewing them. So I've come to just sort of cut, cutting them off once I've uploaded them to YouTube, and then I can just sort of keep them as they are. They're a good set of things to have on there. That works out well there. But there again, I've still got some great films lined up along there. You know, these two great ones, this great one. A lot of them are good. Then we move back to probably what, what I'd say is the closest to being a Star Wars focus shelf on here. Because of course you see Solo, the Clone Wars movie. And these are, this is the 2005 edition of Revenge of the Sith. And these are the 2006 editions of the original trilogy. That's my original DVD of Force Awakens. And of course, the Last Jedi I've got there. I don't seem to ha I don't have Rise of Skywalker on DVD yet. I do have the DVDs of Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace standard as well, so I would like to replace them on there if I can find them. That'll go out well there. And the final one of main DVDs is uh, also a Wallace and Gromit focus shelf. I mean, they're they're a good they're a good duo. I mean, I've got them there. Wallace and Gromit, uh, Curse of the Wearer, the Three Cracking Adventures, and the. Golden Gromit Mug. <laughs> there's a there's a good bit of fun story behind this. So if you're on Facebook, you might be a member of a group called heard of a group called Wallace and Gromit Cheese Posting. Uh, it's just a shit posting group really for uh, just Wallace and Gromit memes. And something that went along on the group was 
the grommet mug, the love for the grommet mug just sort of came into the group. And this one just came up on the, on the group, the golden one, and it was being sold by the Half Moon Base shop. And I just sort of jumped at the chance. I've never, I've never drunk out of this, but uh, yeah, I've just had it on display here. And I love it. I really love it. And then of course I got my uh, little mini box like there. I got this for Christmas last year, and yeah, <laughs> just, I had to do. I, I wanted, I wanted to just put some funny phrase on it when I got it, and then I was like, you know what? Wallace and it's Christmas. Well, I always like to watch Grot Wallace and Gromit at Christmas, so lovely cheese Gromit that uh, came in there. And you know, I love cheese. I love Wallace and Gromit. You know, Wallace loves cheese as well. Lovely cheese Gromit. So yeah, that's the that's the main part of the DVDs, the films in the DVD section anyway. But we get down to this is sort of a speciality film shelf here, and this is of course the Disney DVD collection. I do still have lots of these as well. As I said, Disney Plus exists, but you just can't beat having a DVD sometimes. Sometimes it's just nice to have a physical copy to hold. And that's what these do. So they, these are just some more of the toy box ones that I have. So I don't have all of them out, but I do have a few select ones out. Uh, you know, Genie from Aladdin and Mickey on his own. Uh, get him to look up there with Pluto because they came in a two pack together. But yeah, I got a good selection of DVDs on that one there. You come to the next one. Uh, I bought these ornaments off uh, Shop Disney. Because uh, they just went down in price after Christmas. And I just thought, yeah, you know what, let's get some of these. And get them ready for this coming Christmas. But again, the main classics end there. And it phased, phases into a Pixar collection there. Uh, it's, it's, it's just dribs and drabs, really, of uh, all of them. I don't have all of them, but I have several of them there. And Forky and Slinky from Toy Story down there as well. I thought I couldn't, put, I couldn't not put Forky out here. And Slinky's my favourite from Toy Story, so he was worth putting there. I'm just coming at the end there. It's just a sort of final stretch there. So it's it's primarily the remakes. I don't have. I mean, I don't hold much of a positive opinion on them, but uh, I felt like having these ones on DVD. I'm the only the only one I've really liked since. Uh, it's probably been just been Cruella because it was just more of an original story. It was nice to see something original rather than just you know the same story being told out on screen again, which they've just done multiple times. And they're about to do again, you know. They've, they've, you know, this was this was done, same story. That was done, same story. That was that was at least attempting to do something new, Mulan. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy just watching that on Disney Plus. Cruella, I really liked though, and I'm just like, yeah, let's uh, let's. Let, if I do feel like getting that, I'll get that. And of course, I got Moana there. As a Princess Leia bubble bath dispenser that I have there, uh, it's just something that I have there for the display. Then of course the collection of the rest of the James Bond films, which is just all of the all of them really. So I've got duplicates of some films in there. Rocky there, Indiana Jones, uh, My Generation, the Michael Caine documentary, and this is a collector's edition of Get Carter, which is probably my favourite of Michael Caine's films. This was released just a few months ago because the film turned fifty last year. But of course they couldn't do most of the celebrations because of COVID. But I went to a screening at the Tyneside Cinema and. Uh, it was a. It was also like sort of a Q and A for the release of this uh, on 4K, and I just thought I was in HMV. And I picked it up. You get a film book, some art cards, a poster in there as well, and it's great. I just love that picture of the young Michael Caine uh, in character as Jack Carter in the film. It's a good film. Get Carter. Def is a great British gangster film. It's, it's honestly, it is one of my favourite movies of all time. So it's good to have on the display there. But we come to the bottom shelf now of the collection of DVDs. Uh, again, this is just merged in with other stuff. So you got the uh, TV box sets. Uh, can't, just can't see it behind the Buzz Lightyear cups there, but there's the absolutely fabulous box set. That's all the films, all the series of that, uh, apart from the movie, basically. Uh, it's Jennifer Saunders and Joanna Lumley. Uh, you got two Marvel series there, Agent Carter and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and one series American Dad. I mean, all that's on Disney Plus these days, but sometimes it's nice to have some of them. Uh, Batman, complete series, 60s Batman. Uh, family Guy, fam just some Family Guy stuff up there, and uh, some South Park in there too. Battlestar Galactica, uh, Blackadder's back there with Woody in front from uh, the Toy Story 4 Cup. Yeah, Captain Scarlet and the Mist Runs. Come over to the next one. Uh, the British version of The Office, uh, what Ricky Gervais, not Steve Carell. Uh, Doctor Who, that's one Doctor Who box set. It's the only Doctor Who box set I actually have in my collection. That's just the original three serials. Uh, it's, ba it's a box set just called The Beginning, so you get you get the original three with William Hartnell in. Uh, a few random Family Guy box sets there, and 
Faulty Towers. It's still a still a hilarious sitcom after all these years. Uh, Little Britain, of course, that uh, ended controversy some year, uh, a couple of years ago now, and it ended up getting taken off most of the streaming services. So having these want to watch, want to watch you get that time you want to watch the series every now and again. Having the DVDs always comes in handy, you know. But I do have some other bits here. These are the these are the same Coke bottles that I got in twenty seventeen for the release of the Last Jedi. The as you can hear, if you just uh, hear the shaking there. The Coca-Cola Zero is still in there. I've never opened them after all these years, after like nearly five years. So yeah, they're there. It's a full set as well, Finn, Ray and Kylo. I've never opened them and I don't think I plan to. But then we phase, it just sort of phases into the Simpsons box sets the rest of the way along. With these Incredibles 2 cups with uh, Dash and Elastigirl. Thunderbirds up there and another classic comedy, Dad's Army. Great, great comedy series there. So yeah, that's mainly the Blu-ray DVD shelf that I've got here. A lot of it's just sort of the same as before, just with the DVDs that is, but it's very different to what it was when it was upstairs. You can see the mirror on the side there, which is from what is there. And I'll just show what's on the side next to the wash basket. So I basically have, I have the mirror there as you can see, but I've just got two lightsabers there from the Disney shop. That is the Slave Layer cardboard cutout. You might remember it appearing in the background of a few bits, so I do still have it after all these years, so that's there. And then just some other bits. And this is, of course, the screen for my projector. It's collapsible, fold upable. So, I mean, I watched I watched Kenobi on it. And it was so good. And then on the side there, I do have some posters. So, Ready Player One, same one from before. Uh, Boba Fett, row one. I never added that one to the set. So, it's good to see that one in this room instead. So, I've got that one up on display for the character. And then these are just some James Bond prints I got. Uh, again, I got these back in 2020, hence the reason it's the original No Time to Die poster, as opposed to the one that's official. But these are just the the top three of the, of Craig's five. So, as you can see, Royale, Skyfall, my favourite, and of course, No Time to Die. That's basically what's on this side of the room. It's uh, yeah, it's very much not what it was back when I had this room before 2015. So that's just what to show that. So we get to the other side of the room now. Uh, this is by the window, so I do, I do tend to have the curtains closed. Whenever I open them, I only really have the middle window open, so this just works out well. It works well for some of the figures, especially so they're not getting always getting direct sunlight on them. I try, I try to keep it off, uh, off them at times. But we start with this bookcase here, so on top we have the Vintage Collection X-Wing. Uh, this is the Luke Skywalker version as opposed to the Antoch Merrick version. That's a good one to have there. Uh, Ahsoka Starfighter, this is from the Clone Wars era. I just put Goldie RPS 6 in there because I don't have R7. And that's the original Ahsoka inside there. This is the TIE Silencer from The from the Last Jedi, which I picked up from the Entertainer uh, for about... I think I, I got it cheaper than it was in original release, so that worked out for me. So yeah, these are just on the top here. I've got space for other things to come on there, but I'm very hesitant over what goes on there just because of the curtains. So I often just have what I want on there and see how that goes. Coming down though, we have a few more other display pieces. Uh, this is the box from the Star Wars droids Boba Fett action figure in the Black Series. I do, I did like this box. I, I, couldn't, th I couldn't throw it away just because of the artwork on the front. I've even checked out the droid show. I'd, it's not, I'd say it's not the worst thing that uh, has been made by Star Wars, but it's by no means the best. Like, it was better than Ewoks. I, try, I tried watching Ewoks. I watched, I watched like, the first episode and my literal response was, what the hell did I just watch? But I watched droids and I quite like droids. I think, I think it was better off as, what, as it was. On the bottom there, I got a few more similar to those uh, Aston Mo James Bond cars I had. Uh, yeah, just some more die-cast vehicles like that with dioramas. So Slave One at Cloud City, Y-Wing on Naboo, on uh, ta uh, no, Yavin, Battle Yavin over the Death Star. That's what I was looking for. And the Naboo Royal Cruiser. I think this is from Attack. It's either Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith. This and it's on its way either to Coruscant or, M or Mustafar. So that's what there. And on the side there, I've got the big guy. I did get it. I did get a Grogu. I didn't have this guy when I last filmed anything in the room. I don't think he's ever appeared on any of the videos that I've got. But I did pick this guy up from uh, Forbidden Planet. So he's guarding my Lego Palpatine shuttle. I've only got a few bits of Lego dotted around in this room at the minute. A lot of it is just sort of, sort of stored away in the cupboard there. Again, this is probably the only one that's probably the same as what it was before. Uh, back in 2015, because a lot of my stuff stayed in there. So... That's all I can say there, but the Power of the Force Sand Trooper on Dewback. I know there's a more recent version, but I picked this one up from a toy shop here in Newcastle, and it went well there. Uh, Reek from Attack of the Clones. I did have Anakin on that initially, but I've taken them off because he just didn't stay on. And this is, of course, another Boba Fett 
phone and controller holder. I tend to keep him down here most of the time. Occasionally I'll put him on the desk when I'm using my phone, but he's sort of safe when he's there. And we come down to the next one, and it's just more books down here. Uh, Stormtrooper of the Year, I kept that uh, one there. And that's one more of my uh, Rise of Skywalker cups. Uh, I've got the other one in the other shelf section, and this is just more of my books. And as you can see, it's Disney books that I've got here. These are like the these are like the villain stories and the twisted tales. Uh, it's not all of them, but uh, there's some good ones in there. I've read through. I've only actually read about two of two of them. I've got to read more of them. But the other ones on this side, the villain ones. The only one I haven't read is the Cruel Devil one, evil thing. So I could get to that soon. And on the side there, I've got uh, Trivial Pursuit, bite size. Of course, you could just do a full game of Trivial Pursuit, but this is a course from 2005, so that's only episodes one through uh, three. So, oh well, the, and the original trilogy. And on there, I got some more railway books, you know, British Heritage Railways, and one on British Rail before it privatised and became what it was. And there's a guidebook under there as well from the Wensleydale Railway. So, yeah, that's what I got there. And I got some more books back there, those uh, random machines. So, some Irving Welsh that you can see right there, who did train spotting and that. And then we got there, we got the final of my. Uh, Star Wars Cups, uh, the case for much have, have my PlayStation 1 games in. And then this is just a mix of Legends and Canon books that are there. Some good ones I've read in there, I've pretty much read all of them. Shadows of the Empire is my favourite one, but that's out of Legends. Behind there I have some Canon ones as well, but it's going to be too much of a hassle for me to get those out and show off what they are. But I've, just, I've sort of just done that because the Legends books are always smaller in size, so that works out for me there. But as I said before, this is the same cupboard which stored a lot of my loose stuff there. As you see on the wall there, I've got a print of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I got that from, there was a pack of them in a Total Film magazine. But I only have one frame going spare at the minute, I thought I'll get that one there. This was in promotion for Kenobi, so yeah, naturally I got them. But there's some good ones that were in the pack as well. There was one of uh, some Stormtroopers on newer with one of their transports. But yeah, in here it's just a miscellaneous amount of things so in there i got again this is the same one as before that's a lot of the loose lego i originally had in this room uh luke's land speeder wheel bike you know that that was the last set i actually bought back in 2014 that's how off with lego i've been these years so that's there uh, yeah it's just a, that was a custom gunship and uh, that was there and then underneath i have just sort of again figures i've stored away but i've sort of put them in these bags that they're all sorted together and safe together so that's what's there. I do have some uh, cosplay bits in there, including my hand Solo one. Uh, I do have a hand Solo cosplay, that's to say the least. You've probably seen it on Instagram, but all that stuff sort of kept in there where it's safe. But that's all I can really show from that. So we come now just to the desk. There's nothing much going on that's uh, on here. i uh, just keep a few bits around there. My, my, my computer's still there, but yeah, I've, I actually plug it, because this is actually my old TV. Uh, I have it plugged onto there. This is Because, of course, I have a bigger TV up here there against the wall. So I usually, I usually have my computer hdmi into this, because the screen on that one's just died so it's it, i can still use the computer when it's plugged in on there i just got, I got my uh, playstation 2 uh, lying down there i've been getting that out and playing a few games on it lately but i think this this feels like it's uh on its last legs just uh due to the way it acts at the minute it doesn't even play some of the platinum games of the ps1s so i'm tempted to replace that with just to get a used one of ebay in the next few weeks and replace it there got a few more of those glass coasters They're similar to the fantasia one that i showed this is a uh, one from the lion king uh really like that really like that artwork there from what's going on there, and a few other basic ones. These are just glass ones. You can get them from stands in like uh, shopping centres. That's where they came from. But in the background there, I do have some of my uh, PS2 games. There's some good ones in there. Uh, get, get, mainly get these from CX, or there's a lot of retro game shops around. And just where I've got these from, I've just really worked out. Well, I'm trying to keep the keep this still while I uh, film what I've got because I picked up. Obviously, I picked up this one in CX, but uh, some of these I picked up. Because uh, th this James Bond one and the Snooker one, I actually picked them up at a retro game shop in Arbroath. Uh, it's moved locations like three like <laughs> like three times since I've known it. Because it was a, uh, I think it was uh, Yards Games. It was it's called now. It used to be called Abbey Video Games in Arbroath in Scotland. But the guy the guy who runs that is uh, he's he's one of those really top gamers as well. Like they've got all sorts of different stuff in there. But you know you have some of those retro gaming shops darted all around. Uh, the country. Uh, there's one in Doncaster even went into, but the the Arbroath one's a really good one. The guy, the guy who owns that, he's a good guy. Cause uh, if you if you ever do go on that one, I will say you probably might recognise him if you watch the Crystal Maze, cause he did go on that with a team. So that's worth uh, that's uh, just worth acknowledging there. As I said, on the side there, I just have a few other bits. My Lego X-wing, uh, still standing though. I keep that one out on the table. 
uh, the child, this is a flask, just a coffee flask I had for work. Uh, the centerpiece from the Black Series of Darth Vader there. And just some glasses here, so I've got Stormtrooper, beer, Audrey Extravaganza. I picked that one up when I was at Talaclin. Uh same like, like I did with the glass. Uh, it's just a Superman one, and again, more glass coasters there from uh, one of those stands there. And then my computer, I do have a uh, mouse mat from the Extravaganza as well. There's a few things that I just sort of picked back, picked up from there. So just sort of take there. From the corner there, I just keep my... Uh, I've got that. This is basically Exploding Kittens, just in a Star Wars version. I got my desk fan there, and that came in handy over the summer. As you may all know, as you may know, there was a massive, massive heat wave here in the UK, and it got absolutely boiling. Having that and the other desk, the one I had, uh, you might have seen it earlier in the video, big white one. Having that was a relief. <laughs> it was just anything, anything to get through that intense heat back in July. So, yeah. But again, there's not much on the desk. It's kind of just a tidy spot for my computer access, just where I edit the videos, because usually usually I just I basically film there and I don't actually have a tripod or anything at the minute, so I'm just getting like a load of DVD cases, stacking them up, and then I'll just stick the camera on that when I film the reviews. So that's just how that goes out there. But yeah, I just thought I'd give a quick show of my desk before uh come on to the last major part of the collection. So yeah, this is the last major part to show the collection. This is just the part that you just don't see in the reviews and it's a very mixed uh, spot there so as you see I've got some movie posters across the top there uh, Rogue One, Repo Man and The Terminator and then along the top we've got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Blade Runner 2049 and these two Lego Star Wars ones again I've had those since 2006 and they actually they, until recently they were actually in the same position they were originally in in this room and as you can probably see what I had just down there I'll, I'll move the camera back to it in a moment you'll kind of see why I ended up moving them recently and the corner there, we have a bo another Boba Fett poster. But yeah, this is just, again, another part from my rail enthusiasm was just adding some railway-themed posters to my set there. I sort of just scoured on eBay for prints and uh, found ones I liked. So, Flying Scotsman, that's a classic piece of artwork for that from uh, the 1930s. Because, of course, the Flying Scotsman used to depart from 10 a.m., from King's Cross every weekday, so you would get you get your one from ten o'clock, and it would carry the name. Uh, they changed that, and they changed that in recent years now. So now it departs from Edinburgh Waverley at five forty in the morning. It calls only at Newcastle though, so you can, you can get like a straight because it calls at Newcastle just before seven in the morning. So if you if you're commuting from here to London, it's perfect because you can just you can hop on it and you can be in London for half nine in the morning. It's great, but uh, yeah, I think it's a shame they didn't keep it its original name, but that's what's there. And this was a uh, an old style service, Glasgow, the Coronation Scot, and Edinburgh, the Coronation. So again, that was similar to the King's to the Flying Scotsman, the Coronation that is. Departs at four from King's Cross, arrives at ten, and of course the Coronation Scot would be along the West Coast Main Line. So that would go from London Euston to Glasgow Central, and same sort of route there with their different uh, branding of trains there. So yeah, that's that's always a good that, that's a great poster just for the artwork there. And there's some more of those postcards i got. I've got smaller frames for these ones for the wall. That's just a basic Talakin Railway one there. And that's one of Douglas, who was named Duncan for the weekend in his RAF livery. And that one there is Dolgok on the Dolgok Viaduct. That is basically that. It's basically that, but in sort of, uh, you know, live action format. And then I've just got this nice, nice rail sign. I got that from, uh, again, got that from Talakin. I love that. We caught along here now. Cornish Riviera Express. That would be from London Paddington to Penzance. You can still sort of get that to the to the stage well, on the GWR, and you can get the Night Riviera, so that's always a good one to have there. Going down, this was an exclusive print that I got at the the picnic as I was vlogging at Talaclin. There was the picnic that you that Jack, Robin, and that and Luke and I went on, and this was we we got like goodie bags included with us. I'll just get what we had because it's just down the corner there. You got goodie bags that look like that that came with a few bits in and this exclusive print limited to limited to 50. i got number you can't see it but i got flipped that because i managed to hide it there but i got print number 23 this was limited to 50 and i got this one luckily there so that's one thing i'm pleased to have and be able to frame and put on the wall and uh, it's just it's just that same audio extravaganza photo but made to look as though it was mid sodor picnic in the railway series just from something audrey had written in and just below there, that's the Vale of Rhydol Railway. Uh, again, that was a leaflet that I got, but that was just that just looked so stunning, that picture. I just thought, you know, I'm framing that and I'm putting that on the wall too. 
so yeah that's just the it's just the railway posters i've got there as you see i've got my chest of drawers there with just some bits stored in and along the side there i've got some unhunted posters and different bits there and in this file here i actually keep the card backs for my uh, vintage collection figures i just want to show this on camera but yeah i when i when i've reviewed vintage collection figures these days i cut the bubble off put the bubble, bubble in the recycling but often the card backs look so good i have to keep them like i really like them you know but then, and i even extended that to the black series scaled ones and you know i found a menace part of the fourth clone was 2d you know a lot of that i kept in and I just I felt that was worthy of doing. So yeah, I, d I only did that. I only did that for these. I just got a lever arch file and just some basic folders, and that keeps that keeps them safe in there. So I'm just trying to get it back on the shelf in the hideaway there. There you go. I've got, I've got the display poster on there. I've not been able to put that back up since moving into the room. I had that in the background when I was uh, upstairs, so I was able to keep that safe. And now we come to the final part of the main part of the collection and this is the Detolf cabinet again you don't see this in the videos and I don't think I actually showed this because I had this upstairs because this actually belonged to my dad because uh, he, he collects uranium glasses but then he bought a Millsbow cabinet from Ikea so, uh, and so he didn't need this one anymore uh, and he's uh, I just I just got it off him and I've just used that to display some of the bits I got so on the side here this is a uh, this is the 2006 Lego Slave One. Uh, of course, L L Lego Slave One kind of caused a bit of controversy last year as I was sort of subtly letting off earlier in the video. Uh, but this is, it's sort of the 2006 one. So I got, I got a funny story behind that. So I bought the 2000, I got given the 2006 Slave One years ago, back in 2006, uh, I was 10. I started building it, but then I started to procrastinate while building it and I never actually finished it. And then it was just during the lockdowns and that, because I rebuilt another set that I had and then I just had that thought to myself, what if I tracked down all the bits that I had and rebuilt the set? And lo and behold, it took me a while, but uh, yeah, I rebuilt this Lego set after, you know, I was 25, 24, 25 at this point. I, was, I finished what my 10 year old self started. I was jokingly saying to my friend in the Kylo Ren voice, I will finish what you started in the same style. Uh, so I move around what else is there. We've got the Code of Ikea Batman from Arkham City. I just love that. I had to put that on top of the cabinet, even if it's sort of blended in with other Star Wars things. Uh, Jyn Erso and Edu. It just goes well with the Code of Ikea. Like, you could see that as a Code of Ikea statue rather than a Black Series figure. So that's nice to see there. And of course the Lego Falcon line there. And my custom Lego Django, which I made back in 2011 during the summer when I was injured and mainly, can, <laughs> mainly stuck around the house. Uh, just finding something to do rather than staring at screens. And this is just the uh, Black Series U-Wing. I just wanted somewhere to store that because I didn't have a stand for it. But yeah, we'll come down to the cabinet now. As you can see, I've sort of tried to customise it a bit with some decals. R2, Vader, don't do it on the side there. And there's some on the other side. Just there. So, that's good enough there. I do have push lights, as you can see, on the top there. And I would open this, but I'm just trying to be careful with it. But on the top shelf there... In fact, I might just do so because I can, I'm can. i getting so much glare off the uh, camera there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully open the ca open the cabinet. And then we'll come down along with it on the inside. And I'll put these lights on as well. I mean, it doesn't show up so much during the day, but I mean, at night when the lights are off, this is amazing. But we start at the top shelf here. So this is, uh, again, Black Series Overspill. I've, I, knew, I, told, I said I wasn't complete with it early on. I mean the highlight piece there is the Emperor on his throne in the middle. Of course that Emperor Palpatine figure was recently reissued as part of the archive line so you can pick that up but just without the throne and so that's always worth grabbing. And again it's mainly Sith Lords you know it's, it's just more expanded universe or extra versions because you know, I've got the uh, throne room Kylo right on there well I had the standard Last Jedi one on the main shelf as well as the San Diego Comic Con exclusive version that came with a flag and then at the back there, it's primarily Mandalorian stuff. Uh, just a few notable notable cards there. You know, Moff Gideon, The Client, Bo-Katan. It was a debate to put her there as opposed to putting her with the Clone Wars stuff. But I think when I put Cosca Reeves on, I opted to put, put, her, put her in here with everyone else. Uh, on the side there, uh, obviously, Wandering Jedi Obi-Wan. Reva, the third sister from Kenobi as well. 
Cub Vanth is there as well. He was, he was quite a struggle to get a hand a hold of at first, but I managed to grab him. Uh, this is actually the Return of the Jedi, the, the original Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker figure. I just uh, I managed to I made a custom cloak and boiled the hand to try and get him in a, in a false push pose to have him on there. And of course I got Fennec there as well. But yeah, that's the first one down. We come down to the next shelf where I have the Disney Store Elite Series Premium figures. I keep them in here now and they look great. And of course I'm caught with Kia statues there. So they're the same ones. I haven't really bought any newer ones since. And then just below I have some Expanded Universe and Gaming Greats characters. And of course this uh, this Disney Land Builder Droid droid. I uh, got my friend Jake, Jake Kell, to do one of these to do this for us. In, uh, when he was there and I got I got I got him to do that and he did that for me nicely there so again it's just, it's just a mix you know as I say I got the part I got the power of the force she's all there she's or and dash Rendai there expanded universe whereas the scout trooper and uh, Shea Vizsla are gaming greats so it's just a nice variety there that I've got going on I do like these Kota Mikia statues as well you know the Kylo Ren uh, the lightsaber on that one's actually the one from the diecast elite series because the lightsaber on that one kept like fell off and kept breaking and it just won't fix back on, so I've kept that as is. And we come down to what is a heavily expanded one shot. I'm just getting my chair out to film this. So I sort of got the idea from Sith Lord 229 to do this. It's my Boba Fett focus. <laughs> and uh, it's very crammed in just by how much I've got Boba Fett wise. And I know there's, there's more to come out as well. Like there's the one from the comic packs, which I'm looking at getting. But I do sort of have note of all the Boba Fett things that I do have in here so far. Including the signed photo by Jeremy Bullock back there, the late Jeremy Bullock. He signed that uh, when I met him in 2015. The Black Series helmet just sort of takes up most of the room <laughs> in this uh, case. So yeah, that is a, that is a, that is a hassle. But uh, yeah, I mean, i got the Funko Pop. That, again, that's the only other Pop vinyl I have actually out on display at the minute is the Boba Fett one there. And that one's from Return of the Jedi. I, I have no, I have no intention to get any more at the minute. So uh, yeah, I don't, don't see myself adding to that. That's why that one's there. And uh, it's the only other. Re of course, I've got a, re a retro collection version of him carded at the background there, and that's a loose version. I bought two with that one, just so I can have one carded, one opened, and I can have one that looked like an original one. I mean, I'm never. I know that I'm never ever going to own a uh, rocket firing Boba from the the seventies. I've I've written that off in my life a long time ago. So it's nice to have then the closest equivalent to what you can have. But it's just a different variety of Boba Fett's uh, among there. Including my uh, custom one, which is next to the uh, Kota Bikia one at the back there. That's actually a custom Boba Fett. So that is the uh, Jedi Ruins. Because of course there was a Jedi Ruins figure released. But back in November I was just getting sick of not having a Boba Fett figure. Based off the Mandalorian appearance. And I thought we're going to get one from Book of Boba Fett. So why don't I make this one, this custom one, and then lo and behold we get that one out, so it doesn't bother me too much, but that's there. Carbonised droids, both in the 6 inch scale and 3.75, uh, Tython without his armour, and Return of the Jedi. And just along the side there a few extra bits, uh, fighter pods, I've still got I still got those darting around, classic Lego Boba, and then of course Black Series Book of Boba Fett Boba. So yeah, that's uh, that's always a good set to have. And then on the next last shelf down, we have the Darth Vader focus shelf. As you can see, it's a, a lot smaller compared to the Boba Fett one, but the Darth Vader mask does take a lot more space on the shelf. There was a new one announced from Kenobi, but I, I don't, I'm not going to get it, simply because I've got this one from A New Hope. I, I know it, it doesn't actually fit in all the way through, and getting that thing in and out of this case is a nightmare. So I've been here for a while, but we do have a, another final glass coaster down there. And the 500 figure, which is on the meditation chamber there, Macquarie concept. Uh, another Christmas tree ornament, Darth Vader there, along with the original Black Series version of Vader from 2014 2015. Uh, even though that one's very uh, inferior to the other Black Series Vaders, I do like it because it has the one main advantage that the other ones don't, and that being that the head helmet is removable, but it's going to fall over if I try and put it on, take it off. I'm going to just leave it. But we do have an unmasked Vader back there. Along with the other item that I have signed by David Prowse being the signed photograph that I got at a com another Comic Con in 2015, which is there. I was tempted to put, I do, actually, I, that's, a, that's a light. I do have the uh, burned one that came with the Kylo Ren 
San Diego Comic Con exclusive figure. So that is down there as well uh, with the rest of it. So it's good to give it a bit of a Vader focus on that shelf there. Let's close the cabinet door again and you can see it with the lights on as seen there. But yeah, that's my cabinet there. So yeah, that is my newest collection tour for 2022. As you can see, it is massive. Like, it's much bigger than it used to be. I just thought I'd film it around the room like that. Definitely done so. I'm just holding the camera now in hand. I'm not really, as I said, I do uh, stack it on top. But I'm not really meaning very much of a tripod kind of thing this time. I've just, uh, I'm just talking to the camera holding it with my hands here. So apologies if it is a bit shaky. And my camera is starting to die. So I just want to say I hope you enjoyed looking at this collection tour. Do drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I've uploaded something next time. But I'll, I'll be sure to see you in the next review.